Hello guys. Um, I know I haven't done this in a in a pretty long time, but well, we're doing a regular video today. Um, I think the last time I did one was last week when I went under the bridge. Yeah, today we're today we're doing a reg regular video. Uh, don't mind the yellow kangaroo. Um, he will be my he's gonna be my placeholder for a second while I do things. Look look at the Australian yellow kangaroo. Look at that shit. Ah. Anyways, uh, today is gonna be a review. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm cleaning, so uh, you just gotta have to look at the kangaroo. The kangaroo is my placeholder. Um, for uh, a movie, I'm doing a review for a movie that I probably should have done the review a long time ago, but I never got to it. But now I'm getting to it, so yeah. That movie is The Babysitter. I got, I got a few movies I gotta review, but, um, The Babysitter. It's a, okay, where, where do I start on this? I really like the movie. The movie took me, took me by surprise, okay? The movie really took me by surprise. Because I came into this movie, it's a, it's a Netflix horror comedy. Produced, it's an original Netflix film. Um, by the way, if you don't, you should get Netflix. You definitely should get Netflix. You should look that shit up. It's got some good stuff on there. There you go. Another shameless, uh, another shameless promotion. You know who you are. Shit. I'm just flaunting your shit. I'm just plugging the hell out of you. But I'd love to because you have good stuff on your on your uh, thingy. So yeah. Um. Uh, anyways, the babysitter. Like I said, it took me way by surprise. I. I ended up really liking this movie. Because, you know, I thought it was going to be super cheesy, which it, it did have this, like, it's a horror comedy, so it did have this, like, really weird, funny moments, but it wasn't really that cheesy. It really wasn't. It was actually very well made. It actually hit me in the feels, man. It got deep. I never thought this movie was going to get deep like that. But it, it got deep. Now, the plot is pretty cliche. You can kind of tell how the story's gonna go. Because, you know, you've seen this a few times over. You, you've pretty much seen it, like, a couple times over. You know? You know, you've seen this type of story before. But I like the way the characters were good. The characters were good. I had no problem with the characters. Um, I do have to say one thing. There was one guy that was really, really funny. Really, really funny. Like, the funniest character in the fucking movie. He died way too soon. Like, he died, like... I wish they kept him around a little bit longer, you know? Because he was the funniest character in the movie. He really was. He was the funniest character in the movie. And they kill him off, like, way too soon, in my opinion. I think they should have killed another character off, which I know why they didn't, because it's played by a bigger name. But, um, a bigger name star than the, than the other person. But I think they should have killed that character off, because I don't think that character had as much substance. As the as the character that got killed off before them. And I will go into that when I get to my spoiler portion of the video. But we're not going to the spoiler portion yet. Um, but yes. I like the editing um, of the movie. And as I said, the characters were good. The plot was good. It's, it's very interesting. Like you... Like the plot's cliche. But you... you it's like, they made it in a way where it's enjoyable, you know? Anyways, you can't really get past the cliches nowadays. Well, you can, but at the same time, you can't. But I enjoyed the movie. I thought everybody played their parts well. I thought there was no really bad acting in this movie that I could tell. Everybody was convincing to me. Everybody did really good. There was one part where I think the writers did something stupid. It wasn't the acting, it was just the writing of how they did it. It was kind of stupid, which I will go into that in my spoiler review. 
All the good shit comes out of my spoiler review. So, in my spoiler portion. So, which we're going to be heading to in a couple minutes. Because there's not really much else I could say about this movie. Um, I guess I should get into the rating portion. What, how, how should I rate this movie? How should I rate this movie? Um, I give this movie a good 7. Wasn't the best... It wasn't the best horror comedy I've ever seen. No. But I think it was decent. I think it gets a decent 7, okay? A decent 7. You know? Not not too low, but not too high either. Like, you know. It's a decent 7. It's in the middle. Because it, it's really good. But it did, have, it did have some problems, you know? It had, it had its problems. There weren't too many problems, but it has problems. And it's not like the funniest thing I've ever seen, no. So now we're going to get into the spoiler potion. So, if you haven't seen this movie, and do want to go see this movie, don't watch this portion of the video. Stop. Stop right here. Stop. Don't ruin it for yourselves, because it's actually really good. Right? Right. But, if you do want to watch a portion of the video... Wait, I gotta keep my placeholder here. What am I doing? You see that? You guys see that? There you go. But yeah, if you do want to stick around and watch the spoiler part, because either you've seen the movie and you want to talk to the, uh, with me about the movie, which is why I do this, and just to go a little bit more in depth, that's why I do this. Then yeah, stick around. Or if you just don't give a fuck, you can stick around. But I really implore that if you haven't seen the movie, you should go watch the movie. Because like I said, it's a pretty good movie. So now, once we got that out of the way, let's get into the spoiler portion. Let's get into the spoiler portion. So, shit, let me just say that this movie... Build up, man. Build up. Everything in the first portion of this movie fucking built up to the final fight scene. I loved it. The crawl space. The driving. The knife. The toys in the hallway. Everything built up and you don't really see it coming. That's what I like about this movie. Like when, when the black dude runs up the stairs and then he slips on that car. I didn't see that fucking car. Well, I kind of did. But at the same time, I didn't really see that coming. Like, I didn't think him leaving the toys in the hallway would be significant to the movie. Just like, I thought the crawl space might. But I did not think that the driving would be brought in. I really didn't expect that. What else they bring in? They brought in a bunch of random stuff. The knife. I thought the knife was probably insignificant. But they brought all this stuff in, right? And it was good. It was good how they did it. Like, he was looking for the knife. And the knife was in the... the he thought the knife was in the washing machine, but it was actually... they the, the, the mom moved it. But anyways... Yeah, but... um, Let's talk about the characters. Now, the kid... I do like the kid. The kid was good. He had that cliche story arc of being afraid of everything and then he grows into his own person. But I did like the kid. V. I got, we're going to talk a little bit more about B later. Because I got some interesting theories on B. And plus, um, for that post credit scene, we got to talk about that too. And ideas. But yeah, B, B is an awesome character. But we will go more in depth on B later. Let's talk about the funniest character in the movie that died way too damn soon. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the black guy. <laughs> Shit. The black guy was fucking awesome. Now, that black guy... I forgot his name. I'm sorry. I don't know his name in the movie. Not trying to be racist. But that black guy was fucking hilarious. He was the funniest part of that movie. Like, the funniest... I'm not kidding. The funniest character in that movie... Was the black guy. The black guy stole the show, man. And he went out there and he was just hilarious because he he was all like he was he was he was a character, you know? 
he wasn't just like a regular person in that world. He was a character even in that world. Man, because he was all just like, you know, I'm covered in blood. Like, what the fuck? I'm covered in blood. And shit, you know, he was funny. He was funny. He, he just stood out to me. Now, I kind of wish he lived longer, you know, because he was one of the funniest. You want to know who I think he should have lived longer than? You want to know who I think realistically he should have lived longer than? Bella Thorne's character. Why the fuck was Bella Thorne's character the last one standing? Because, first of all, nothing against her character, but she was weak. Um, she was kind of not really that um, interesting. To be honest, she was just there, blah. She was like the, she was the sex symbol. And plus, uh, Bella Ford's a pretty well-known actress at this point, um, since her Disney days. She has risen, which I will say that she was a pretty good actress on Disney. She was pretty good in that Shake It Up. I watched a little bit of Shake It Up back when it was on. Uh, don't judge me. I did watch a little bit of that. Um, it was pretty good. But, yeah, Bella Thorne has come a long way from her Disney days. And she... So, yeah, I get that she gets silly, but... Her character... Her character was boring. There was only one scene in the end where I really kind of started to care about her character. When she was sitting there and she's like, oh, I'm only here for... Uh, to be like this, like, uh... Journalist or some shit. And that's when I'm like, oh, shit, she's kind of hitting me in the feels, man. I kind of feel for this character. And then the writers ruin it by randomly have her being like, oh, pick up a knife and start trying to kill the kid. I'm like, what the fuck? You can't do that. You can't have me actually start to care for this character. And then fucking, I didn't think that worked out well at all. What I would have liked is instead of her trying to kill her, is she took the kids, the kid, when the kid was, like, saying, help me and stuff. She's like, yeah, I'll help you. And then B came in and shoots her in the head with a shotgun. That's how it should have went. Like, still the shotgun kill, but instead of her trying to kill the kid, which I know it's the show that B still cares about the kid, but instead of trying to kill the kid, I think she should have been like, yeah, I'll help you. And then Pow! that would have been better, to me at least. Because, you know, you, I don't like how they did that where she was like, oh, oh, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just here to be a journalist. I didn't know how to do it. And stuff. They were having that bonding moment. I'm like, oh, I kind of feel bad for her. I kind of understand. And then she's just like, all of a sudden, like, I don't give a shit. Ah! You know, that was stupid. I did not like that uh, transition at all. So, yeah, I think the black guy should have outlived uh, Belfort. Uh, let's talk about Max, the, uh, the shirtless killer, you know, the shirtless guy. I like that guy. He, he played his part well. He played a guy, he's like, yeah, I'm not here for the wishes. I'm not here to do anything. I'm here to kill people. I'm like a sociopathic jock. That's great. He played his character well. I really enjoyed his character. His character was, the comedy with his character, it made sense because this guy seemed legit, insane, insane. So he would let the kid be like, oh, Go take care of that bully. I'll kill you later, you know? Shit, he does seem like the type of guy that would do that because this dude was totally insane. And I love that. I love that this dude was just, like, legit insane. Like, legit insane. And the Asian chick. She was cool. I don't really... I wasn't really fond of her, but she was cool. She was a cool character. She was cool. You know? B is awesome, but we're going to talk about B later. Uh, let's talk about the cop killings. Uh, or not the cop killings, but just the kills in general in this movie. Uh, this movie had some really good kills. Some really good uh, kills, especially the ending. The ending kill, which I will get into in a little bit. But um, I will say that the, the, top, the top two... The top two, besides the ending kill, would have to be when he blew up the Asian lady. When he blew up the Asian lady when she was in the crawl space. That was a really dope kill, you know, when he blew her up with the fireworks and he sprayed that, like, spray on the cage. He nailed her in there. That was awesome. And then, um, the second best would have... Well, 
Yeah, second best would have to be, um, sadly, the black guy, who I think should have lived longer. He had one of the best bets, where he slips on the car, and he falls backwards, and he lands his neck on the fucking trophy. That was a really good kill, too. That was really good. That, those are the highlight kills. Now, the ending kill, when this motherfucker breaks logic, steals a fucking car, drives the car up a ramp into the fucking window. I don't know. Somehow, not without even knowing that B was in there. This is the first time he's actually driven a car. Without even knowing B was in there, he drives the car into the fucking house and lands it on her. Now, that was fucking awesome. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> like, shit. D shit. And then that line he said later, he's like, hey, when I found out you were the big bad, uh, that's what makes me smart. When I found out you were the big bad and you betrayed me, I, I put a car on you. Or I drove a car into you. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Don't fuck with this kid anymore. Do you hear that, Jeremy? Oh, the fucking bully. I hated that bully. That bully was just like... He was funny, but he was just... I don't know. That bully was bad. I had sex. I'm like, no, you didn't, motherfucker. No, you didn't. Same here, like, I had sex, and he just kept talking about it. And then he kept talking about his dick. Like, these guys around him are talking about, like, hey, what does it matter about his dick? I'm like... Dude, why are you talking about this dude's dick? This is, this is just a weird guy. That was a weird part of it. It was funny. But, um... But, yeah, the... What was I about to say? Oh, yeah, I gotta talk about this moment. Now, this moment is where the feels pops in. Because throughout the... In the beginning of the movie, you see that B, the babysitter, and the kid have, like, this friendship. Oh, you can see me. Okay. That's good. We don't need the kangaroo anymore. B and this uh and this character and this kid have a friendship. And it's a very strong friendship, and then you find out that she's a demon worshipper and all that, and she's trying to use his blood for um all the stuff. Right. So and they before the they had this thing where they would talk about like having a great league of people. And they would, um, you know, uh, what's it called? And they would, like, save the galaxy and they pick a team. And then I like it when, in the end, where she, where he drops the car on her. You can, and she's like, hey, um, you never told me your super team. And she, he's like, I never asked. You never asked. And then... He's like, he lists them off, and then one of them is me and you, like those two. And she's like, oh, and you never said you could pick us. And then he's like, yeah, it's make believe you can pick anything. And then she tries to do the little uh, finger, the little handshake they had thingy. And he's, he's done with it at this point, but. You can still tell that she... I think she legit cared about it. I think that friendship was kind of real. In the beginning, it might have been using, but I think she might have grown legit feelings for this kid in a friendship way. And it just... That, that hit me in the feels when they had that moment because it's just kind of sad how it went down, you know? It sucks. Like, yeah, she's a demon worshiper. She's a rotten piece of shit. She shouldn't have been doing that shit, but still, it d does seem like she legit cared about him. And we know at one point he cared about her. Which, it doesn't seem like he does anymore. It just seems like he's screwed with it. He's screwed with this shit. He's screwed. He's done. It's like, no, you just tried to kill me. You had these fucking crazy people over in the house trying to kill me. You killed some cops. I'm done. I'm done. Now, now we're going to talk about B and that after kind of scene. Now, B was an awesome character. She she had a lot of interesting uh, qualities. The thing is, B 
B-E is short for Bezebobub. It could be short for Bezebobub, you know. Bezebobub, which is another word for the devil, which I find very interesting. Because we have this character who is pretty much um, using this child to make wishes come true. And she said she one of her first wishes was make her strong and brave and not afraid of anything. Which was, yeah, to make her strong. Which she is a very strong character. She's a very badass character, but she also has heart to her. But then she also has those moments where she's killing people. And she's a very interesting character. But the thing is, is when did she make her first wish? Because who knows how long she could be doing this. And why does she have people doing this with her when it seems like she could just do it on her own? I'm very curious with, the, with this book that she was using. Now, who knows how long she could be doing this? She could be like from the 1700s, technically. Which leads me to the after credit scene where we see that she survived being hit by the car because obviously she must have made a wish making her like impervious to things like that. That she survived that and she attacks the police officer. Now that could set up a sequel. Now I got a, I got a couple ideas for a sequel. One, we could just have it where he's still a kid and... She either comes after him for revenge and just throw the whole friendship out the window, comes after him for revenge, but this time he's ready and we could have like a showdown. Or place it about, uh, how old was the kid? I don't know. Place it when the kid's about in his 20s, right? In his 20s. He's sitting here, he's living his life, he's older. Maybe, or maybe make him a little older than that, maybe 25 or something. He's living his life, he's older, he has moved on from the situation, and he has forgotten about it. Then all of a sudden, kids start, he notices kids start going missing in his town, or maybe somewhere else. And he realizes what is happening, or no, he... Like, yeah, something starts happening where he notices things, signs that B is back, and then he starts going determined, he starts becoming determined to hunt her down, and to uh, take her out once and for all, and it will be kind of like a battle between these two, like a cat and mouse game, and he will actively be hunting her, but then she will flip the tables and actively hunt him, but the thing is, I kind of still want that friendship thing to remain, I kind of want her to be more hesitant about killing him. Because at the end of the movie, it seems like she still wanted to be his friend. So I I would say that she is hesitant about killing him, but she will do what she's got to do to survive and keep doing what she's doing. Even though the book is burnt, maybe she could do something. because, Or maybe she could come after him because for revenge for burning the book and she can't get her wishes now. That could be another motivation. But maybe she has somehow got the book to still work and she's still doing it. And he, I like the idea of him actively hunting her. That's what I like. It's him actively hunting her, him manning up, seeing her as his responsibility, his job to take her out once and for all, and her kind of being like, I don't want to kill you, but I will if I have to, and you know. And them just going at it. Them just going at it, fallout war. That would be cool. I know it kind of goes away from the first movie, but I think it would be an interesting take, you know? And plus, in this movie, I would like to dive into B's backstory and learn more about B. How old is she, actually? How long has she been doing this? How was she introduced to this? Does she... Has she actually signed her soul over to the devil in doing this? Like... Things like that. Is she is she still fully human? Obviously, she's impervious, so she's not fully human. But is she, like, still human at all? That's what I'm trying to get at. Is she a demon now? Is she something else? You know? I want to know more about this character. Also, resurrect the funny black guy. I don't care how you do it. Resurrect the funny black guy. That's it.
He he has a chance of being resurrected. All he got was like what a statue stab in his neck. That's an easy heal. That's an easy fucking heal. Like you could probably bring them all back besides the Asian lady and maybe Bellcorn because she got her, her head exploded. But you can bring Max back. He just got hanged. But yeah. But yeah, that was a really good movie, and that's what I would like to see if there was a sequel. Is exactly what I just said. Those two things, and like I said, I give this movie a seven. It's a really good movie. I say check it out. You can find it on Netflix. Um, this is uh the Soulless Trench Coat signing off. I just want to say everybody have a nice day. Stay frosty. Stay soulless. Yeah, and I, I'm signing off for real this time. Beep, bop, boop.